Hey Shuby Doodlers, how are you doing? Well, I'm happy to get back into the swing of my book, Generation Moon. I've had to take a month out. My mother died um, a month ago, so there's been a lot to process and a lot to do. Uh, and now I said I'm coming back. And I was going to do a Kickstarter. Um, and for many reasons, I've decided I'm not going to do that anymore. And I'm going to go straight to publication. So I will be publishing through Ingram Lightning Source and they uh, print the books on demand. So if you went to Amazon or a bookshop, say I'd like a copy of this, then if they haven't got it on the shelf, they will order it. And Ingram will actually print that one copy for you and send it out. It will get to you one way or another. So I want to get the files up to Ingram as soon as possible. Then I can actually get sort of a few copies printed that I can send out to influencers and people to start getting some reviews and things like that. Then I will set the publication date in about two months time because I'm sort of in, in discussions with um, sort of science festivals, things like that, to see if I can come and you know promote it at those. Uh, but I need to have copies to send to them and it's, marketing <laughs> it's the hard part of publishing it's it's relatively easy to write a book it's relatively easy to illustrate it it's relatively easy to make a book it's very difficult to sell copies it's a whole other thing so when I came to look at w where I was at I had these two pages at the end uh, which were originally going to be for the names of supporters from my Kickstarter campaign. So I now had these two empty pages and I sort of thought, oh, well, I'll just say, you know, this is the trilogy. These are the next two books coming out. Watch out, you know, look out for them, etc. And it just looked terrible. And I thought what I really need to do is to have some kind of illustration in there. And I started thinking illustration. And I thought, wait a minute, why don't I basically do the covers for the next two books because I know what they're about. And when you see this picture here, this is how I imagined the cover for the first book. But the first book, when I first started working on it, was quite different to what I've actually done now because it was just going to be the one book. So this was going to be called First Kid in Space, which is going to be the name now of the second book. So I can come back to this. Um, but things are, the story has moved on. But I thought I'll come back to this idea and this is a smaller one. So I've traced that basically to get, give me a, a starting point. And so I've got them out of these nice jackets, um, MA1 jackets, and I put them into spacesuits. <laughs> so this is, mm, this is a hodgepodge of um, a kind of a NASA stroke SpaceX kind of spacesuit. And this is a bit of a hodgepodge of a Chinese spacesuit because uh, CJ here is Chinese, so it's all part of the plot. Uh, I'm not going to tell you anymore. Uh, so, so I've done this as my first sort of preliminary sketch of moving on from there, <laughs> moving on from there. And it, it all makes sense, it all evolves. I know some people get very twitchy about, oh, this is tracing, it's copying. It's, it's fine because it's, it's all my original work and I'm, I'm copying to, uh, to, to move on the illustration to the point where I can do the illustration that I want. But it's all my work. I'm only copying my work and I'm shifting, moving, changing, adapting. It's not sort of copying. This is certainly allowed with copying. And when it comes to copying, it's OK to copy to learn as well. You know, don't get hung up about copy. Don't copy other people's work and sell it. Obviously, that is not <laughs> not the way to go. This is where I've got to at the moment. And I'll probably just turn the camera off and sort of do some more work and sort of come back to you in a moment. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to the She Run and Join channel. Click that button down there and ring the bell to get notifications. Thanks a lot. So I've been doing a little bit of more research on the spacesuits and a bit more drawing. And this is now a hopefully a final drawing. I've got my drawing taped to a board, which is at about 15 degrees angle so that the water will sort of roll down this direction. I'm going to start <laughs> as ever with Naples yellow. So I'm going to get a little bit ready there. And I'm also going to get a little bit of Scarlet Lake there, just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to start with Glenn's face here. And come around the eyes and I'm just going to leave a little bit untouched around his nose like that. I'm going to leave a little bit untouched on his cheek um, and then 
a little bit untouched on that cheek there too. So I've got a, a sort of a, a flow of Naples yellow in there. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of scarlet in there and a bit of scarlet in there and a bit of scarlet on the nose. And just kind of work that in. So it's really quite subtle. Perhaps I ought to focus in a bit on that. Hmm. Um, but then you can't see what I'm mixing. So it's one or the other, isn't it? So, <laughs> so there we go. And and then I'm going to add a bit more. Uh, if I can bring that over a bit, I can bring back a little bit more Naples yellow, and just start to sort of bring that in. So it's still wet, and I'm kind of washing. The slightly stronger colour into the the weaker colour that's already there, and I think I need a little bit more on the nose. So I'm getting some scarlet there, just to make it a bit more of a kind of a button nose there. And then we're going to want a bit of bottom lip too. And I think I can maybe have a bit more strength so it's it's starting out with a really weak color which means adding lots of water and it's just a very very thin tint in that case when you've got lots of water and then you start adding uh, more of the color so that you get a darker hue okay <laughs> it's all the different terminology isn't it uh, if you add a shade then you're adding black to it make it stronger colour, then you got a hue, and adding white to it, then you're getting a tint. And in watercolour, it works the other way around, so you're not actually adding white to it, you're adding more water to it to allow more white to shine through from the paper. There you go, <laughs> get your head around that. Now, um, I'm going to do the same, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of ochre into CJ's face. And now I'm going to add quite a lot of water here. So that's quite thick underneath the shea, <laughs> underneath her brow like that. And again, I'm going to, I'm just drawing a little circle around there, a little circle around the nose, a little circle around that cheek. And then, so those again, those circles are for the highlights. I've got a little hair on there as well. And again, I'm going to use Scarlet Lake. And I just put a little bit of scarlet around there, like that, just to sort of work a bit of colour into the cheeks. A little bit of colour in, and and highlight as well. So it's working colour and highlight into the cheeks and the and the nose, like that. And we'll stick a little bit of colour underneath the, on the bottom lip, like that. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of this ochre into these darker areas. And then eventually I'll probably put a bit of purple in there over the top to, to add a bit of sh definite shade, I think. I think I'm going to do a bit on this, um, I don't know what you call it, it's the, uh, the helmet fixing, isn't it? So they're very, very different and it's quite tricky to totally work out these helmets without having being able to go and sit in front of one and draw it and you see a little bit from this angle a little bit from that angle so these helmets seem to sort of fold around this point here and it and the visor comes up and over the top and there's kind of cloth material behind there which sort of concertinas up whereas the American helmet um, is something that is placed over the top and the Chinese suit is sort of, again, I'm probably going to use a tiny bit of Naples yellow just to give a sort of a, a, a warmth to it. I don't think we need much more than that. Just, just sort of down this side, really, and maybe there. Doesn't need a lot. But I'm going to take some of it out, I think. Just dab that out. So it's just almost a tiny stain of Naples yellow just to give it a bit of warmth because then they're going to come in with sort of blues and things which is going to make it quite hard. I think I can do something similar with the over here as well. 
and I can bring that so that it's sort of white and bright on the top layer and then we can have it sort of darker down here and then that will sort of fade there catching the light behind and we probably want to put some bit of darker in there it's bit by bit with watercolour and you want to think about which colours you don't want to kind of stain with other colours. So sort of do the paler colours first and the brighter colours and then the, sort of the dark colours that will come in at the end. So I've got a tiny bit of French ultramarine here for the eyes and I'm just going to put like a little circle of blue there, clean the brush and then drag that down to give that a bit of sort of shininess and we'll do the same there like that clean the brush so then we can kind of drag that down like that and it just gives that subtle kind of shininess to that and again this is going to be kind of a white t-shirt in underneath here so it doesn't want to be white <laughs> And again, this is like a white roll neck here, which again doesn't want to be white. It wants to be a shade of white. I think I'm going to put in some underpainting here and put in some sort of shadows like that. And under there. So I'll be painting orange on the top of this. And I just hope it's going to work. <laughs> If it doesn't, then I have to start all over again. And we want some there and there and there. And we want a bit of shadow in under there. It's all thinking about where is the, the light coming from, where are shadows things likely to fall. We're certainly going to have some shade underneath there, I think, like that. And then we'll have some sort of folds and things down there. Um, we really want some in there, and I think we'll have that coming up a bit more like that. I think that will work for the moment. Maybe a bit darker under there. And then when I start putting orange on top, then I'll use hue to kind of bring out the depth of the color, but this is more shade in there. Similarly, I can start working in here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue in with the gray. It's it's neutral tint that I'm using. These are all uh, Winsor & Newton colors. This is not the, the standard set that I sort of show in other things. So this is my own sort of private <laughs> set of colours that I have chosen over the years. So this is my palette. And I'm going to want some in there. Certainly want a bit of shade underneath there. And I've gone over the top so I have to kind of wash those bits out. It's <coughs> <laughs> a shame. Sometimes make a little mistake and it just works and it just looks great. And sometimes it just doesn't. <laughs> so we're going to have some um, shade and things in here. It looks a bit kind of unsubtle at the moment, but I think once I start, see these are going to be blue bands and things. And once I start putting bits of color in and other things like that, it'll all so to come together. So this is the cover for First Kid in Space, or if it isn't the cover, then it's going to be um, <laughs> a good sort of rough for it. And right at the moment, I'm wanting this to put, a, a, you know, for advertising basically in the first book to say, you know, coming soon. And so this book is First Kid in Space. And well, I, <laughs> I know you won't have read the first one at the moment, 
while I'm making this because um, because it's not published yet but you might be watching this in a year's time or ten years time and it will be published and so you may have read the book uh, in which case you kind of know what happens in the first book um, but I'm not really wanting to give anything away it's really weird on YouTube because you know that people are going to be watching things in years and years to come um, and there are things that I could tell you now that I'd probably rather not. So if you're watching this in 10 years time and I haven't told you something <laughs> and you want to know then um, yeah, put it in the comments box and I'll see if I can answer your question. So I think that's getting there. I'm going to just dry this now. People will be wondering what kind of paper I'm using. This is sea white cartridge and you would think that I would be using some fancy watercolour paper. <laughs> but I'm not um, and I've just been using cartridge paper all, all my life start off with because that's all I could afford <laughs> once you start using something you get used to it when it comes to finished artwork I've tried various things and you know and this is kind of what I always come back to it's weird so now I'm going to do some of the hair and can I say what can I talk about when I'm doing this I, don't, I should, probably shouldn't be talking because I should be concentrating on what I'm doing really shouldn't I Shade in around the back there. In fact, I think I'm going to bring that down a bit further, like that. That looks a bit better. And then CJ has her hair. Yeah, she needs to do that. Oh, it's really, really difficult because I want to kind of mention. I want to mention things about the story, and I mustn't because there'll be spoilers. Um, and explains why <laughs> why they are in this pose and why <laughs> why they're wearing these spacesuits etc etc but I can't tell you it's very frustrating you're gonna to have to read the book aren't you? and I suppose that is marketing as well <laughs> so part, of, part of me tantalizing you here and telling you well I, you know I can't quite tell you what's going on here because it's really subtle marketing to try and make you buy a copy of the book so if the book is out when you get to watch this then please go and get a copy <laughs> and if you can't get a copy and you can't afford a copy or whatever go to your library and certainly here in the UK you can go to your library because request a book and if they haven't got it they'll get it in for you which would be really good because then they'll <laughs> have to get a copy in and, um, and that's another sale for me and then opportunity for other people to read it when they find it on the shelves so and even if you have got your own copy um, you can still go to the library and <laughs> do me a favour and ask them to get a copy in <laughs> because yeah that's social marketing is is you know asking your followers and viewers and whatever to actually sort of do some recommending um, and I think that's kind of you know I sort of said that this whole project was partly talking about marketing and teaching marketing and stuff and I think that is kind of particularly I think for creative types that's just a really difficult thing to do I think if you're a makeup influencer you just say hey look i got this makeup yeah just go out and buy it and here here's the price you know here is where you can buy it and this is how much it costs and i think when you're doing your own art it's really difficult to ask people to go out and buy it essentially that's what marketing is <laughs> so if you haven't got a copy yet <laughs> go and get it please you you should find links down below if it's if it's out <laughs> which it isn't while i'm doing this obviously I think I'm going to go for the orange now. Um, I'm going to 
change my brush, get a bigger brush for this. So this is going to be interesting. So I need a good load of water ready. And what am I doing? Let me see, show you I am. Oh, you can't quite see. I got some nice orange here, which I can't tell you what it's called. It's cadmium orange, yeah. Anyway, cadmium orange, that's probably deadly poisonous. I don't know whether they even do cadmium orange anymore, or is this? I think they um, call it cadmium orange from the old days, but I think it's actually made of something else now, so it's not quite so dangerous. So let's see what happens. Here we go. Um, and I've got to do a little Union Jack flag in there, squeeze that in. I think I'm just going to paint this because this requires a bit of concentration and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so now I'm sort of getting more colour straight from the pan or, you know, the, the little pot that the colour's in and I'm kind of dropping it in while it's all wet so that it um, flows smoothly into the wet areas and kind of thickens up the colour where I feel I need it. It's, it's needed. Um, and then we'll have a bit more in there. It's actually drying up in the top here. So I'm just going to paint that all in. Sometimes when you painting a large area like that it does <laughs> the part that you start off with so it tends to dry up quite quickly um, and I'll, yeah now I've gone over there a little bit but that's not a problem I can fix that kind of thing in Photoshop so uh, I'll do that a bit later on, on something like this, you can fix a lot in Photoshop. Um, and, you know, which seems, <laughs> you know, this is traditional artwork that might seem like cheating too. Uh, but it's not, you know, in, in, in days gone by, there were just very, very skilled people who knew how to, you know, take a photograph for print and do basically what we do in Photoshop today, but in, in old analog techniques so uh, images were always being manipulated before they went um, to print so it's, it's 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 not a problem it's just great that i can do it at my desk and um you know in the old days then you'd have to write great long little messages down the side can you please you know increase the tint on this by 45 percent and <laughs> great long messages like they're very technical messages and now you can, as you're painting you can think oh that's all right I can do that I can increase the tint in that and yeah, a bit later and um, and it, it, you know unlike other forms of art this is not intended to be in a frame it might but it's a nice little picture on its own actually so one day it might end up in a frame I don't know um, but it's not intended to go into a frame. So the fact that it's not like proper, properly finished um, doesn't really matter. And that I know that I can do some bits in Photoshop. It doesn't matter because the job of this piece of artwork is, is to be printed. And that's the whole reason it's the raison d'etre of the whole thing that's why it's being painted and that's that's its job so I think as soon as you start to get precious and start to think about oh yeah but how will it look in a frame one day then you're kind of losing the point of what it's all about okay yeah I'm quite pleased with that I think I'm gonna get the hairdryer on that again I get the hairdryer out to, you know, well, to dry it, um, but it's, it's so that I can start working on it more quickly. And, and so that if I am moving on to some other area, I'm not going to be uh, smudging it while it's wet. I don't, I don't want to be doing that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of sort of a purpley kind of shade in here like that. Um, there and under there. 
I feel I ought to put some in just under there as well maybe I'm not sure about that anyway and maybe the ear um, and then I think this can be a bit more darker around here as well let's make that fade and then possibly in around there that can be a bit darker like that it's it's <laughs> altogether you start off kind of light and you kind of bring it up and kind of putting smaller and smaller bits of darker and darker stuff on the top so you're kind of building building sort of layers of very fine thin color as soon as you make it too dark you, you can't do anything to it anymore and if it's got it wrong then you got it wrong um so i'm going to get a bit more blueiness into this now i think like that On the kind of a bluey shadiness. Oh, what's going on there? there we are. And again, I think we do a bit of bit more darkness in there. So I'm going to get a bit of that purple in there and sort of stick that in there as well. Maybe just sort of fade that in there a bit, and then I'm getting this sort of purpley blueness, and I'm going to have a bit of sort of shade from her hair from her fringe like that I think we'll want a bit more in there a bit darker around the back there just to bring that color forward oh I'm just gonna do like that and make that there I think that's very kind of noticeable in the Chinese spacesuit is <laughs> these very blue stripes and everything is very very blue so I'm going to need some really strong French ultramarine I'm going to be using um, I'm just going to check my reference again so this is going to be blue in fact this should have a kind of a buckle on it and and the name and all sorts of things but that's you can have a bit of artistic license in these things I think maybe when I have finished painting this these blues I'm going to run over with a, a, a colored pencil I think maybe just to reinforce the blue reinforce the hue of the blue <laughs> um, I think I'm going to do something like that. So I'm making up these badges, which um, I haven't really thought through. I'm going to have to start designing some mission badges for the next book. So I'm having a, a load of woven badges made for me at the moment. They're on order. Well, actually, being should be being manufactured at the moment, <laughs> which were originally going to be rewards for the kickstarter thing that i was going to do that's obviously not going to happen but i also wanted to have uh, badges as sort of prizes for when i'm at school sessions or libraries and things like that the child most likely to be an astronaut will get a mission badge for generation moon because they're the generation so that'll be fun and maybe i'll find some way of offering them to viewers and people who might have liked one from the Kickstarter. So I'll work something out. Uh, this blue comes down here. Um, that's black, the one that comes down here. So these are like little pocket tops here. And put those in there. And then we have here little blue, I think they're kind of oxygen controls. And this is going to be one too. So these are little control kind of things pressure controls really I think is kind of what you might call them uh, I think we'll have a very red badge underneath there again I'm making these badges up these sort of cross straps here are actually zips and um, oh that's gone a bit skew with so I'll just I should be using a thinner brush for that 
And some people will want to know what the brushes are. So I'm using uh, Rosemary & Co. Designer Series 344. And this is a number four I'm using here. Uh, that will come down there. If, if I remember, I'll put a, a link up here somewhere um, for a video I did about Rosemary & Co. brushes. They're all kind of handmade. They're rather beautiful. Nicely, nicely done. I know lots of people swear by Rosemary & Co. brushes. I'm going to put some yellow around the outside of that. And then some red in the middle for that triangle. I can say it's all being made up as I go along. And anyway, this is <laughs> if this isn't the actual cover for the book, then it's it's a rough and in the back page. If I'm going to use it, it's going to be in black and white anyway. I'm going to want to put a little bit of kind of shade in around there, sort of a darker hue. Um, perhaps even a bit of red in there like that and then that blue wants to be a darker hue up at the top as well like that coming in around like that um, all sorts of little details you start start to see after a while so it's like shadows and things you think you need to add a bit more that strap needs to go black as well and that all these things we need a little bit of shadow underneath there and sort of underneath those ones and like that um, and I think I also need a bit of yellow in around there and she is almost done it's just the eyes which are the <laughs> have I left the cherry till the, the end uh, or have I left the hardest part so I can ruin it? Her eyes are really difficult. So here you can see, yeah. I know before I tried doing something clever and I completely ruined that, so I'll try not to do that again. Uh, here we have a Generation Moon badge. So that needs to come a bit of yellow around that. And we maybe have a bit of yellow around that badge too there like that. Maybe that little wiggle. So it's really difficult. It's not. Oh, I should have a space agency thing. I can. I can Photoshop that in later. So I've invented the space agency. So it's like an international conglomerate that organises things. You know, international space flight in the story. So I don't want obvious NASA thing. Well, this is an obvious NASA suit but i think in the story i think maybe he could be trying this suit on but it, you know i think maybe he might then get moved over to spacex or someone like spacex <laughs> and and then he'll start wearing a different kind of suit so this isn't necessarily the suit he wears if he goes into space so i'm not going to tell you that <laughs> that would be giving it all away again wouldn't it I thought it'd be nice to have that orange because it would stand out on the cover and also links to the fr the cover on the uh, the first book as well. The orange then kind of links in as well. So I'm adding more orange now just to give it, you know the hue a bit, make it a bit stronger in places. So you just got to keep going really. While I'm remembering, I need to put that one in there as well. It's so easy to think you're finished and you get it all scanned. Oh, I didn't do that bit. Shade that stuff down there as well, like that. I think she is almost done, actually. Uh, we need to have a little. And so I got the colours completely the wrong way around here for the Chinese flag. But we can maybe get away with that and say that it's an agency flag or something like that. So now we need that little bit, like I did up here. Um, we need to have a little bit of and blue just up there and that, you see that just makes that little bit of difference eyeballs are not white <laughs> i know they look white but they're actually sort of a multitude of colors and shades so we give a little bit of shade underneath there um and i'm going to try a little bit 
I'm probably going to regret this here, but I'm trying to give her a little bit of a, a moo on her top lip. Like that. That's just that little bit better, I think. So here we need to paint this one, and this is another one of these kind of pressure things. I've added a tiny hint of green to this blue because it has a kind of a metallic tinge to the to the knob. And then the other side is red, but it's kind of almost a pinky, kind of metallic-y kind of thing like that. Um, these are little plastic sachets which have where you can put notes and things like that in. So I'm just going to kind of do something like that to them. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I made a little mistake down here when I'm drawing and this is going to have to um, be faded in in Photoshop a bit later. I'll just paint that in anyway. And then we need some blues. So again, I'm going to get some French ultramarine. Start painting in these blue bindings. I'm just going to paint that in there blue too while I'm at it. It'll probably change. And as I say, the final artwork, this might not be it, but you know, maybe I'll do it again and I'll get all <laughs> everything right that I got wrong today. And also this is going to be in black and white for the thing that I'm actually painting for today. Colours aren't that much of a problem at the moment, but if if it's good enough to use on the finished cover, then that would be really great. And now we're going to need these little things here as well, because I'm going to try and fit a Union Jack into there, the flag of Britain. Uh, we're going to want these. See, I'm not quite happy. This line should be following through out of there. It's not quite working. I want these little kind of gussets. Uh, and then he has these blue stripes around the top as well. A little hint of blue and these sort of metallic bits there like that. I think we're getting very close. I think I'm going to end up being a an expert spacesuit painter by the end of all of this. And like I said, I might do a little bit of touching up with um, coloured pencil when this is dry before I scan it. But I think right now I am going to call that painted and I'm going to get on with the rest of it. Here we have the finished mock-up and I know I'm going to have to paint that all over again because I'm just not happy with it. Um, and I've put in a little spacecraft in the background just to give it that feeling. I could put stars in, but I think I'm not going to. Uh, but this is what I need right at the moment, and so I'm happy with that. So I have put this into a book cover generator online. Uh, I'll put a little link down below for that. It's really <laughs> useful. And what I need to do with this is turn this into grayscale. So this is um, what I'm going to then put into my artwork because it needs to be in grayscale. And there we are, finished. That's the bit I need to do. Thanks for watching. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more drawing videos and illustration stuff. And, you know, let me know kind of what you want as well. In the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.